Welcome back to a brand new season of TVGP's Critical Misses, Season 17. I'm your host, Boston. Joining me as always is Moonpeer. Hi. How the hell did we get to 17, dude? Yeah, I know, man. A lot, lot of twin intermissions. A lot of, lot of good oh. stuff in there. Um, this is, uh, we're, we're going back to music, our, our second music season here. Uh, and uh, last time we, we listened to Nine Inch Nails, which largely considered my favorite band. And now we're going to go, we're uh-huh. going to swing over to Moon Pier and listen to uh, Poets of the Fall, which is one of his favorite bands. Um, yep, which, if not my favorite band, period. Okay. Um, and and, and, and uh, also a perfect mirror of the, the previous season, um, Moon uh, is, is sort of pegging this as his favorite band. I know literally zero about this band so we're, we're, <laughs> we really are the the mirror image of of that previous season so moon why don't you tell us um i guess kind of how you first uh sort of fell in love with poets of the fall and then maybe uh important info we may need to know as new listeners i'm gonna pretend that there wasn't a whole bunch of jobbledness on my side right there but i get the drift hey thanks internet <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah i mean just a brief rundown this is probably maybe a little bit outside of the pale for for critical misses because the whole point is is to watch the biggest the best the dumbest the stupidest kind of right. things that we can and i think to an, a certain audience poets of the fall are huge mm. or i can never say that poets of the fall have ever been mainstream we'll say sure sure because like you say like you me and you sitting in a restaurant someone comes up to us what's your favorite band nine inch nails oh cool i love nine inch nails poets of the fall who (laughs) the what now yeah so it's a little bit off kilter in that direction but i'm fine with that because the more people listen to this band the more i will appreciate it because sure i genuinely do adore them uh so despite what my soon to be run down of the creation of the band will have you believe I actually did not get into Poets of the Fall through video games. Okay. Um, I kind of did, but on an off chance. Uh, what happened was I had a friend from South Africa who adored the Max Payne series. Mm. And in in the Max Payne series, Poets of the Fall are featured, which I'll get into. Um, and he got into the band through the game, and then he got me into the band through him being into the game, which is a weird two, three step verification process for having a video game soundtrack actually show up in your life, kind of thing, right. despite how much you play video games. All right, so, long story short, this is a Finnish band, so there are a lot of European names. I apologize, just like in last episode. I am actually going to attempt to pronounce them, but I'm going to be butchering them. And I apologize in advance to any, you know, Europeans out there who uh, find the, my translation an abomination. Looking at the uh, the band members here, first names, pretty all right with. Last names, that's uh-huh. where I have problems. Yeah, you got Marcus, Marco, and Oli, and then it's Karolinen, Seestro, and Tukienen. So, yep. sure, why not? Yep. Uh, but basically, long story short, there was a the the lead singer. I think the lead guitarist were in a, a different band, um, and then Marcus, oh sorry, Marco Seestro, he's the lead singer. He had a friend called Sammy Yavi, mm-hmm. who happens to be a script worker over at Remedy Entertainment. Ah. Stop me if you've heard the name before, <laughs> right? Um, so. Remedy get a pass for me no matter what because I love their games. Uh, mm-hmm. I always have. They've always made great games. Even the bad ones are great. Um, and Sammy Yavi basically approached Sarah Strong and was like, "Look, I've written this poem. I want to turn it into into a song because I want I want it to be the theme tune for the thing. But we don't have any really good like musician writers on the team right now." Mm. And lo and behold, the song Late Goodbye was created. Okay. Uh, which is, it's used throughout Max Payne 2 as uh, an ongoing motif, and it's basically the thing that plays over the credits as the credits roll. Gotcha. Um, so in that, they basically all 
the band members all met together and were like, okay, well then let, let's just let's just make a band out yeah. of this. I mean, we're all here, we play instruments, let's let's just do the thing. Uh-huh. Uh so they signed with a a record label at the time. I wish I could remember who that was at the moment. They later got away from it. Looks like Insomniac um, was their first label. Uh no, that's their record label. Uh, okay. The other one they have listed is Remote Music, which is a really good label name. Okay, yes. Um so Insomniac is the one they created to maintain control over their own music. Ah, gotcha. Um so Remote would have been the one that they signed all of the original albums to. Mm -hmm. Having said that, today we're going to be looking at Signs of Life, which is the 2005 uh, debut album mm -hmm. uh, by the Formed Band, which does have Late Goodbye in it as one of the songs. I think they've yeah, released... The, the cover here says Signs of Life includes the hit singles Late Goodbye and Lift, and it's not even like a sticker on the front. It's just that's part of the album art. So they're really... Yep. It's, it's very much a debut album. Yeah, because Lyft was featured in um, 3D Mark, the software. Um, oh, wow, okay. So, because they have connections to gamers, shockingly right. enough. And, uh, and if when... anyone hasn't used the 3D Mark software for a long time, I'm not sure if they still do it, but they would have, like, music playing over their benchmark. It's like a video card benchmark tool uh, is, is kind of their most popular piece of software. Um, and they'll have, like, a wizard fighting through a, a lava cave and it'll have like some big a, appropriate piece of music for it. So uh, Poets of the Fall probably had like, well, here's this cool like angels fighting in heaven thing and, and Lyft is playing in the background there. Um, uh -huh. So that's kind of fun. So that actually escalated them so much higher than the late goodbye did. Right. Because... Max Payne 2 was a very great game in a very niche audience. Mm -hmm. If you, you if you like Max Payne 1, you probably played 2. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things where they, they put a bunch of songs together, they released the album. I think they did four or five sing singles from this one. Um, wow, okay. For those of you who don't know, this is back in the day when albums were bought on CDs. That's right, and they and re released a lot of singles. Uh -huh. uh, and those singles were used to promote the album as well as yeah. available for purchase themselves. Yes, yeah, um, CD singles were a thing at the time where you bought a a CD that contained three tracks of music on it. <laughs> uh huh. And it was at most it was so expensive too because uh -huh. the the singles themselves were like usually at least 15 20 bucks and the albums were like ridiculous as two well mm. if the if the singles were imported from another country and then it's like well these three tracks mm. are 35 dollars <laughs> yeah yeah um so obviously being a finnish band they're pretty popular in the european regions i i know literally no american who has ever heard of them except for me except for when i say oh do you remember this moment in this game that's them uh, yeah, because there's there's uh if you played some a lot of 360 games uh at the time, there's there's one particular uh game that featured them very heavily in a way that I think a lot of people didn't realize. Uh-huh. Um I think we are gonna be covering that album and okay. here. Uh we most of the songs on the actual game. We won't be because that by a different band, Wink. Um, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> import their single today. Yes, um, but no, we're, we're going to do Signs of Life, uh, and the, like I said, that the 2005 album they released. I think an album every two years for like the first like six albums that they released. It was like every two years on the money, tick 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 tick. That's great. Um, uh, but other than that, like I'm excited because I want to know what you think of them. Um, mm -hmm. I have obviously predispositions coming into this. Um, sure. And for those of you who don't know, I think we, we talked about it on the production meeting episode. Mm -hmm. uh, they released an album this year, um, right? Uh, which is 2022 for those right. listening in the future. Ghostlight. Mm -hmm. Which I have not heard anything from. Right. So we're so, we're building up to the grand finale here. Yes. Um, I'm I'm curious because I know you one of the reasons why we're doing this is because me and you have very similar tastes in music. 
there are certain things we like, certain things we don't like, but I can't exactly come in here and say to you, oh, let me tell you all about this band called Tool. Because <laughs> that's right. You guys heard about these guys? <laughs> we both kind of have way too much knowledge about that thing. Right. Same with with things like Perfect Circle, Disturbed, right. all of these like I'd love to do a season on Muse, but we're both too into Muse to be able to do a season on Muse. Right, and hey, God, they have so many albums. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. You want a year of Muse? Because we could do a year that's, of Muse. Let that's me right. I'm I'm more than happy to do that. But you know, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, let's just do this and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, but with that being said, Boston, what are you expecting from this? Because I know you have minor interactions with poets of the fall yeah i i feel like as someone who is a uh remedy game enjoyer um i have been exposed to at least i, I never got into the max pain series so i i have i have no idea what late goodbye would even sound like um which is is kind of funny because i Feel like if I had played Max Payne two for any period of time, I'd probably be like, oh yeah, I gotta get, I gotta get what they're going for." Um, uh -huh. But um, I don't know. It, it seems like from like all the other seasons, I don't, I don't really do any research or anything. I'm just grabbing album art so I can put it on the video version here. Um, but from everything I've seen, it seems like they're they're kind of a, a, a kind of like alternative kind of rock thing adjacent thing which is a, a genre i typically enjoy um mm -hmm. i do like I, the um i do like the album art for this album as well mm -hmm. yeah um but i'm i'm kind of it's it's fun going into and it's kind of been a while but it's fun going into an album especially uh digesting the entire thing all at once where one of your friends is like I think you would enjoy this. I think you should listen to this. Um, and and I feel like I haven't been... I haven't had an album like that in a while. I think the Hannah sent me an album a couple months ago that was like, this sounds weird. I think you'd be into it. And I listened to it and I was like, yeah, <laughs> you, na you nailed that one. That that one is weird and I do enjoy it. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of... Go that's ahead. the that's the part that that's gonna like make me most curious. To be honest, and one of the reasons I want to do this is because, like I said, when we did the Nine Inch Nails like like season, we like the band as a whole, right? But our individual preferences per song can either be right on the money or fluctuate wildly. Where like you oh, absolutely for sure. hate a song, and I adore it. Like yeah, um, we. We both adore Closer, but you couldn't stand um, Every Day is Exactly the Same. Right. Like, that's one of your least favorite songs on that, and I love that song. Yep. Like, it's one of those things where, like, I'm curious to see where we match, where we don't match, what songs we like and don't like. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to be curious, because it's a genre that I know we both enjoy. Yeah. So, leading into it, it's like, okay, let's see, let's see where we differ here. Um, yeah. I will say all of the albums that I've listened to or that will be on this show are in English as well, so we don't have to worry about uh, a Rammstein situation of trying to get a translation oh, sure. to see if it's all good. Gosh, I didn't even I didn't even think about that until you brought it up, but uh, that that is good because I I don't know if I would uh, it would it would it would be a while before I would recommend something where it's like I really love this uh, this band. It's all in Japanese, and it's just like yeah yeah. I don't know. There's some stuff that I listen to in other languages, but it's it's not it's not a ton of stuff. Um, but like like um the Who, uh, the H right. U, um, like that's a Mongolian throat singing rock band. Right. I adore a lot of their songs. I'm not going to recommend them to anybody else. Yeah, there's a Japanese um, uh, post rock band I like called Ogre You A Hole. Uh, it's not censored in the the band's name, but that's totally in in Japanese, and like a lot of their songs are like seventeen minutes long. So it's like eh, it's probably probably not an album I would really recommend for ninety nine percent of people. Um, maybe maybe someday. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm excited to uh, to listen to a, a new band, especially ones that I one that I genuinely 
know nothing about and has been around forever. Like those, those are the rare treats of like, here's a band you could possibly like. If you do, they have 20 albums and you can just go, mm -hmm. to, you know, like, I mean, hold on. It's like, let's actually do the count here. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight albums. And mm -hmm. we're covering basically five of them. And they have right. an alchemy, which is basically a greatest hits plus a bunch of B sides thrown onto it. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, some really great songs on that we ain't gonna cover it and i will recommend one of those songs when we get past it sure because uh, it's an amazing song and the story behind it is hilarious um hilarious in a good way right um but yeah i mean i look i'm excited dude i want to yeah. i want to see yeah all right well uh let's go uh listen to signs of life we'll be right back uh -huh. We are back. We've listened to the album, the, uh -huh. the music. Um, <laughs> uh, listen to all. I I didn't even number these tracks. It was like thirteen tracks or something. Fourteen. There's quite a bit. Twelve. Twelve. Ah, so close. Um, of uh, signs of life here. Um, I I have sort of broken it down. Uh, like we eventually settled on with uh, our, our previous music season, sort of track by track. And I have uh -huh. um, overall thoughts about the album. Uh -huh. um, I, I, I want to impress upon everyone listening that uh, no matter what I say about individual tracks, I... I thought this album was pretty good, <laughs> so uh -huh. keep keep that in mind as we as we go through. Like as I crack my knuckles to talk about this album. Um, yeah, let's also appreciate the fact that it doesn't matter how you feel. Uh, you can be you can not like every single one of these songs. It's irrelevant. Yeah. It's not going to affect each individual listener's taste of music. It's true. That's true. I I would recommend everyone check it out because it's uh, so y you might click with it. Uh -huh. and the fun part here is I have thoughts about this too. Sure. Okay, I know. Um, all right, let's talk about uh, let's talk about the first track here, "Lift," one of the the two singles uh, from this album. Um, we will talk about the other single here in a minute, but boy, you definitely made the right choice by making "Lift" a single. Like th that is uh -huh. a single for this album in in every sense of the word. Um, I think my... So you like oh, good. you like me have seen the the movie about the record store stuff, right? I can't remember what it's called. It's John Cusack, Jack Black. I, I know this. I've seen this movie so many times, and literally, as soon as you asked this question, it went the name of the movie went right out of my brain. I, I always get it confused with Pushing Tin, which is a different movie starring <laughs> Cusack. Um, That's right. Uh, uh, but it's... you know the one I'm talking about. Yeah, let me um, look it up. It's not Empire Records. It's the other one. <laughs> oh my god because uh, it's basically a, a, a love story high fidelity sad. there you go Ugh. a love story like embedded in a music store essentially with yep. hipsters about music in that movie they have a conversation about what is the best track one side one uh -huh. this is in the conversation for me oh, okay um i i I thought this album is a is a or sorry. I thought this song is a really good lead up, uh, like an intro to this album because it is kind of thematically and lyrically and sonically uh, consistent with most of the rest of the album. So it's like, hey man, uh -huh. you like this song, you're probably gonna like the whole rest of the album. So yeah, um, and. Something which I need to mention at the top here, which is possibly one of the reasons why I gravitated towards these when I was a lot younger, was m most, if not all, of these songs are positive. Yes, there, there's a couple of songs where it's sort of like, not not negative, but not as kind of openly positive as some of the other stuff. But overall, it is a fairly, not cheery album, but but... It Hope isn't. It's probably the word I would use. So the the one of the hard parts that I have about this album, this album was from two thousand five, and it really sounds like it. 
And uh -huh. to you, that's a negative or a positive. To you, the listener, that's either a negative or a positive. To me, it's fine. But it is firmly trapped between two huge musical swings. So if you look in the late 90s and the early 2000s, you kind of have the the the, the phasing out of grunge and uh -huh. you're kind of getting to the phase out of the I hate my dad yeah sort of music from like the early 2000s <laughs> you know exactly uh -huh. what I'm talking about um, yeah um, uh, 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 stained say hello y you can name like 50 bands on the radio and it's all like I hate my dad slash stepdad yeah um a chug -a -chug -a. Uh -huh. um and then after that, is kind of like post rock, heavier rock, like and the the kind of waning of new metal in kind of the late two thousands to twenty fifteen. Oh yeah, if if you ever want to have a good time, go on whatever your musical streaming service of choice is and mm -hmm. just search for new metal. That's N U space metal for the younger right. generation among us. It's like six bands and a three year period. Yeah, and it like it landed hard. And two thousand five is this quagmire between the the grunge and the kind of yeah rock music and the the heavier new metal stuff. So this album is is almost like a time capsule for someone like me that's listening to it in twenty twenty two because it sounds 100% like 2005's rock. And uh -huh. I don't dislike that. It's not like an immediate click for me. Um, but it, it's an interesting kind of artifact of the, the time. And I, I think the thing that hurts it the most for me is hindsight. Where... If I heard this in 2005, I'd be like, this is fresh as hell. I like this. Like, this is this is really good. Uh -huh. In 2022, you have the curse of hindsight being like, this sounds like everything else that came out in 2005. Um, which, again, not bad, but it, it kind of comes across in 2022 as almost like an also ran, which isn't fair for them because they were just making music in 2005. Um, but it it leaves me very curious for the rest of their stuff and and i'm not judging this super harshly because it is their first album i feel like for most oh. bands you kind of if they have a bunch of albums you listen to the first album and you're like uh, okay that was that was a first album um you know it, it sometimes it's good where it's like i can't believe this was the first thing you put out this is incredible and sometimes it's just like yeah all right uh -huh. moving on to album two um like a lot of people yeah, listening to Radiohead's first album, where you're like, um, okay. <laughs> I think the really ironic thing is, I think the new metal is the the genre that the first albums kick the hardest, mm -hmm. and after that, it's a downward swing, generally yep. speaking. Because yep. talk about new metal bands like like Stained, Linkin Park, Papa Roach, all yep. those first albums are bangers. However, you feel about um, Limp Bizkit. That first album is full of some hot bangers, um, uh -huh. and it's yeah, it's it, it's interesting to to kind of look at this album seventeen years on and be like, yeah, it feels very much like a like a, 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 a era of its time, you know, for for better or for worse. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to bring that up because the second track here, Overboard, has record scratches in it. <laughs> and I was just like, uh -huh. there it is. <laughs> That's the 2005. I don't think it really. I don't think it really harms it. It's not like, yo, what's up, fricka fricka. Um, yes. Did you do ratings, by the way, for the songs, or did I, you just I, give the overall album a rating? Um, I can give the overall album a rating. If I was to, to uh, rate Lift, I'd probably give it like a two and a half or three out of five. I think it's 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 poppier than I I kind of normally go for in rock, which is fine. Um, it, that's normally not the, the, I, I tend to go towards the heavier or the weirder or more experimental. Um, no, as the biggest Nine Inch Nails fan on the I planet, know. you go for experimental. Who would have yeah. known? I like Radiohead. How weird is that? Um, but, uh, I think that it's a really solid track. I think it's a really solid intro. Um, I will complain about 
the lyrics throughout pretty much all of this album with the caveat I'm a big fan of Chevelle <laughs> and Chevelle has put out like 10 albums that sound the same and have pretty thin lyrics just like Muse you know the thing you can uh -huh. leverage against Muse is sonically they're very cool and lyrics are like feelings and um, <laughs> so like I'm not I'm not gonna hit them too hard for that um, uh -huh. but I, I, that, that also, is a criticism words do. English as a second language band as well for sure, yeah. That that's why I don't want to hit them too hard because it's it's. I, I don't know if there's, especially this early on in um, in their career. I'm I'm not sure if there's anything lost in translation. So, um, that one for me is like two and a half or three. Like it's solid, it's good. It's nothing where I listen to it. I'm like, Ugh, um, but I I think it's it's a cool single and I think it's a cool intro to the album. Um, Overboard uh, is the second track. I feel pretty similarly about lift of like i'm surprised this wasn't a single because i feel like this especially for the chorus uh oh, could have done a really really well chorus, this one yeah and and i i think I, I listened to this album a couple times and i think on my second or third listen i think i realized that i think for the first three quarters of this album i think it I think it's a really good, like, I'm going to belt this out in my car album. Like, if you know the lyrics yes. to this album and you want to sing, this is a cool album to, like, sing along to a little bit too loud and, like, really belt out these choruses. And I think that's, yeah. I think that's cool. And the, that is something that I will, I love about Poets of the Fall throughout the entire, like, discography that i've listened to is like i adore the lead singer's voice like he's mm -hmm. got a he's got a strong voice, voice. For, for yeah. like tonal shifts everything else that's happening in between like he can don't get me wrong he's no chester bennington but there's very <laughs> well, few yeah. chester benningtons on this on this yeah. planet he he doesn't um, i feel like he doesn't have the lead singer in of of poets of the fall doesn't have a unique voice it's not like listening uh -huh. to ghost where it's like that only, that's one person with that voice, but he has a really strong voice, and I think that's I think that that counts for a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I th I think this song is also for me in like the three out of five range. I think this is another really strong one. Again, kind of surprised this wasn't a single because I I think especially hearing the chorus, you're like, yeah, man, all right, yeah, cool. Uh -huh. This is this is all right. Um. All right, let's get the spicy takes. The the uh, <laughs> what I'm assuming is the lead single or the biggest single off of this late goodbye. Um, it was the lead single, yes. All right, that is a hundred percent the right choice. Late goodbye should have been your first single off this album. It is the most earworm song that I have heard in a really long time. It's impressive uh -huh. because I don't like this song. <laughs> yep. So that's, that's the funny thing is is I got into the I think we talked about it in the part one. I got into this band through a friend who loved Max Payne 2 and loved this song. So when right. I searched out the band behind this song, this is probably my least favorite song on the album. <laughs> it's it is a really good single because I don't like it and I almost don't want to listen to it again. And I cannot get it out of my head. And like uh -huh. I'm sure if I had heard this on the radio in 2005, I'd probably been like, "Whip, all right, time to, time to go to my local record store." What was that even called? In, it was in Mentor, Ohio. It was like a, a, a record store that always sound, smelled like, um, like incense. Uh, one, one of those. Um, uh, Got to go down there to pick up this album. Uh, uh -huh. But. I do like the fact that this is the first song where they start introducing other instruments. I think this is the first song that's got horns in the background, which I really like. Not car horns, yeah. despite the theme of the song. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, it's really interesting because, like, the I, I think if you listen to this album, especially as like a a record promoter or something, you're like, yeah, this is the one. This is this is your lead single. All the other ones are fine, but you can you can point this one out nearly immediately and be like, yes, this is. This is your one. I just don't like it. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. it's me like sonically and musically, it's fine. There's nothing really wrong with it. The lyrics are a little rough in the chorus, but it 
is definitely memorable in in a lot of ways. Um, like literally, my notes for this say, like, despite being good, I don't like it. Yeah, like uh, there's there's something about it where it's like, I don't know. It's 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 odd. I, I there's a lot about this album that I can't exactly put my finger on, and I can't exactly say like this is the one thing I don't like about this song. But I I don't really like it. But it should have been your first single. Yeah, that was the right choice. Um, for me, this is probably like a one out of five. Like I don't want to listen to the song again. And I don't. It will be in your head for weeks, my man. I know that's the problem. Because the worst thing is, it's in my head right now. Just seeing mm -hmm. the title because you're it incomplete. Go in my head. You're incomplete. Uh -huh. Yep. Um, next song here. Don't mess with me. Um, I. This song is a really weird dichotomy. It's the heaviest song on the album, pretty clearly, mm -hmm. and I think they uh, it, right, the pace change is a bit of a left turn as well <laughs> between like goodbye and this song. Late like, goodbye ends, and this is just like <laughs> it's just like what? oh wow, all right, yeah, let's 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 do a little switch here. Um, I think I think it's a cool heavy song. I I think they they have a heavier song here but they don't it's not too heavy for the album because uh, you know once in a while you'll listen to an album where you're like this is pretty good and then all of a sudden just it's just like where did what is happening um uh -huh. i think this one fits here really well i really i really wish the lyrics would have paired better with the vibe because and maybe this is me like uh having some like new metal ptsd or something but like i i think when you have a heavy song that's called don't mess with me i'm not expecting break stuff <laughs> to be clear uh -huh. um but i feel like opening your chorus with don't mess my hair and then kind of like having these like weird kind of and again I don't know if this is another thing where it's kind of lost in translation or something, but like, there's a really like, don't push me too far, don't mess up my hair. And it's like, yeah, I want like a little bit more teeth to this though. Like, I want a little bit more, yeah, something. Not even anger, but just like, what's bothering that you is, besides your haircut? Like, in honestly, in all honesty, that is the one thing I'm not like. I love Power to the Fall. Um. And that is the thing that bothers me sometimes the most about them is sometimes they're not heavy enough. As someone who likes a heavy song, yeah, someone who likes heavy music, yeah, that is one of the things that sometimes does get to me. It's like this song, the theme, the music is great. Get me some thrash in there. Get me some heavier drums. <laughs> get me That's some, right. you know, get me a growl or two. Like get get in there and like start start mm -hmm. messing it up. Um, I I think that said for me, this is probably a four out of five. Um, I, I like the, the song overall. I don't, I don't think the lyrics being a little bit soft really harm it, but it's just sort of like a little bit of like, it's like a six year old who's really angry where it's like, ah, you're cute. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> you a little, little angry fists. you a cute little guy. Um, but I don't think that really, I don't think that really hurts it. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> next up here is 3am. Um, I think if there's a song in this album that is 2005, it's this song. Um, I think oh. this is a by-the-numbers 2005 half ballad that is stuck in right in the middle of your album that is fine. It's I I like this song. See, the funny thing is my, my rating for this is actually middle of the road, but the thing I love about this song is the mood of it. Like, all throughout yes. the lyrics match... Like it's it's one of the few songs that one of the songs that match the best, I would say, with the lyrics, the tempo, the rhythm, the music, everything all That's matches yeah. to create a really good mood. And considering mm -hmm. it's a song about being awake at three AM as an insomniac, this speaks to me. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I, I think I, it. I, I feel about this track the same way that I kind of feel about the whole album, which is it's fine. Like it's very much. Um, of its time and of its era but it's not that's again it's not a bad thing i'm gonna keep beating this horse because i think 
let's let's talk about this for a minute. So let's talk about Nickelback as the t- the title of this movie. Okay, before hold on, uh-huh. before you say what you need to say, let me say my piece because I want to know if we join in the middle. Okay, you know what you're about to say. I don't. Okay. Nickelback are a perfectly fine band that create a, like catchy, stupid, junk, trash, pop, punk, rock music. Like mm-hmm. they. They are really good at writing really memorable songs that are distinctly yep. average all the way through. So my my shorthand for Nickelback is they are a good band that makes a better punching bag. There's something about Nickelback that people <laughs> just hate. It's it's and their Chuck music Roger. is fine. It's yeah, it, it really is. He has a punchable face. Roger. Yeah, and like Nickelback makes fine music that is uh-huh. pop rock. And they have mm-hmm. a couple tracks every album that's pretty hard, and it's like, yeah, well, that's that's pretty good, yeah, sure, um, and they're mm-hmm. fine. Um, I certainly don't want to say that Poets of the Fall is like Nickelback. They are. I feel like Poets of the Fall is 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 doing some more interesting stuff. I think they're they're especially in this this first album. It it feels like. You know, there's always that old adage about your first album where it's like it takes you years to write your first album and a couple months to write your second one. Um, Mm -hmm. It really doesn't feel like that for this album, I think because of what we were talking about in the first part with the the foundation of the band. It really does kind of feel like on a bunch of these tracks, they are really feeling out. Like, okay, do we want to be a little heavier? Eh. Do we want to be kind of lighter? that's okay do we want to do th- yeah okay like we want to we want to have a a guy a dj nah, yeah i don't know um and oh, yeah. 3m very much feels like that where it's like all right do we want to kind of be like a by the numbers kind of pop rock band yeah i don't know maybe maybe not um and i think it's okay i think for me it's like a three out of five and um, it's it's one of those it's one of those songs where it's like I'm not sure I would go search it out if I was sitting at my my computer and listening to music, um, but if I have my whole collection on shuffle like I usually do and it comes up, they'll be like, oh yeah, 3M, all right, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, next track here is Stay. Um, this is another kind of. It, it pairs really well with with 3M and kind of the yeah. I was gonna say this gives me the parable parabola, from yeah vibe. Where yeah, it's like these two should be a single song. I feel like, and I there's something about stay that I kind of dig. I I don't to me I think this is the song out of the the pairing of the two, where for me all of it really clicks. Like you were just saying about 3AM, um, with like the lyrics and the the music and everything. Um, I. I Again, I can't put my finger on why I kind of dig this one. A big part of it is how he says stay during the chorus. He kind of extends chorus that is, word is really, really long. Great. Um and he he gets to he, he gets to show off his his vocal chops a little bit, which I appreciate. Um but I for me I think this is like a 4 out of 5. This is a really solid song and I I think um it's it's in kind of a weird spot in this album. Um, but it's 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 pretty good. It's it's a nice, good, solid track here. Yeah, I think like you know, like fish paired with red wine, you should go three a.m. state. That was a joke. I'm pretty sure it's white wine for fish. Don't <laughs> before don't someone come is at me. you. Di- how did you? I'm a sommelier. It's like hold on, hold on. Don't come. We at got me. jokes here. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's it's a good pair. I yeah, think it's a good pair of songs back right. to back. That's right. Um, next up is seek you out. I don't remember this track at all. I wrote it's like overboard, but done a little better. Um, so I, <laughs> I feel like when you got twelve uh, songs on an album, you, even though I listened to it a couple times, I, I feel like I don't remember this one at all. This is, this song confuses me because this song is about a breakup, but also it's titled "Seek You Out." Right, like like a, a hesitant breakup almost, but yeah. Yeah, it's it's a strange song. Like I think it's fine, but it's like the first half of the song is about breaking up and being fine with that, and the second half of the song is about looking for the same person again. Question yeah. mark. Ba- baby, I changed. We can do this again. I got a ring. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll put that one at like a two and a half out of five because I don't remember it, but I didn't write anything negative about it, so I probably kind of dug it. Um, <laughs> the next song is Shallow. Uh, I have, my first note here is, uh, the bass line almost makes it, the bass line, especially in the intro, almost makes it sound like a song from a Western movie, and I kind of, I, I think that's kind of fun. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it is specifically about that, but I, I think that's kind of... I think that's kind of fun. Um, my my big criticism about the song, I think it's actually really solid. Um, uh -huh. And I really like the line and the chorus, but I wish they didn't repeat it multiple times. As much as they do. Yeah, like I, I feel like it, it takes the punch away from it when you repeat it two to four times, like that same line. A number of yeah, times. Yeah, it's a really great line too. Like uh, yeah. for those of you who don't, who didn't listen, the the line is "Glad the waters are so shallow when the river runs so cold." That's a really solid line, especially yeah. considering it's a very kind of a downer of a song. This one because this is very much a the depressing song of the album, I would say. Yep. And that it's is a, a fantastic visualization of a, of a, of a lyric. But my God, do they say it too much? Yeah, it, it's a real good Death Cab for Cutie lyric where it's like, oh man, that's good. That's you, you twisted that around. I like it. Um, but yeah, like I think that's that's one of those things where it's like you, you had a really good a really good line and it it needed some other lyrics around it to make it shine a little bit brighter because um, I think it it sort of diminishes uh, the the more you use it. But even so, I, for me, I think that's another three out of five. Like it's. It's pretty solid. Um, I think everything else about it, like all of the um, the verses, are are pretty solid. Um, the bass line, the whole song, is really strong. Um, it's just kind of the chorus is like, yeah, you, you needed like one more pass on that. Like you needed to just take take another look at that one. But mm -hmm. nothing nothing terrible. Um, next track here is everything fades. I really wish I had had you listen to this before we start recording this again because the note i have here is the bass breakdown section about halfway through the song sounds exactly like the genesis sound chips bass sound effect and like that's literally the only thing that i can hear out of this song is that like like that sort of very specific genesis sound chip uh -huh. sound effect and I enjoy it for that. I don't know how they. I'm not sure if they had like uh, some some sound chip uh, business in here, but if they did that with an actual bass, I I kind of respect it even more. But I respect it a lot, kind of out of hand. I'm pretty sure it's just an actual bass. That's wild. I don't, I don't know. How I they... keep in mind this is also a group full of nerds and gamers as well, so yeah. chances are that it might actually just be that. But yeah. I don't know it, so it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Hook up I will say, though, this is one of my favorite songs on the album. It's really solid. I think um, I think this is one of the outstanding tracks here, um, just because I, I think all of it comes together. Like, the lyrics and the, the music and uh, every instrument is kind of firing on all cylinders, which we don't I think we don't always get in some of the songs here. Um, again, first oh. album. No, it's not like a moral sin or anything. Um, but I think for me, this is where this is uh, kind of the 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 high point of the the second half of the album here. The the yeah. beast the B side, if you will, because um, I'm old. Um, but I I think <laughs> this one comes together really nicely. I I think for me, this is like a three and a half out of five. I think it's really. It's it's just yeah. good. I th I think I it's one of those things where it's like, oh, you're so close to getting it. Like you're so close to all of it coming together that I I, I want you to get there. Um, yeah, I I love everything phase as well because it's a sad song. Like make no mistake about it, the contents of those lyrics are sad. Mm -hmm. But again, it's a sad song with hope built into it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right, we got a, a, a three-track uh, ending for this album where you got kind of three ballads back-to-back -back uh -huh. here ending this album. Um, Someone Special uh, is the next track here. 
I think all three of these tracks are fine. Uh, this is definitely... I feel like with rock albums in general, uh, but especially during this era, it was always like, all right, we rocked out for about 10 tracks. Let's show our softer side. I'm going to bring a piano. There's literally an acoustic guitar as well in this. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the acoustic guitar. Because I can hear the finger piano. squeal. <laughs> That's right. Um, so it, it, it feels very much like that. I don't really have any anything positive or negative to say about someone special. It's just kind of a solid rock album ballad. Like, it, it's... This is the least of my three songs. These last three songs, this is yeah. the least of them, in my opinion. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I think for me, this is probably like a two out of five. It's fine, but I, I don't think this is the, the star of the, the back half of this album. Um, I think for me, Illusion and Dream, the next one is the is way stronger. Um, uh -huh. This is the song of those three. This is this will will always be in my rotation because I adore mm -hmm. this song so much. Especially the chorus delivery is just yeah fantastic. I I sort of wish that uh, after everything fades, they would have taken out someone special and sleep and just left this as the the kind of end of the album. Up. Yeah, and uh -huh. you because I I think twelve tracks <clears throat> is solid for this album, but I think you kind of run into as they're kind of figuring out what they're doing, you run into you know pairs of songs we had like 3 a.m and stay which both kind of sound the same so that it kind of gets muddy in the middle of the album you have all three of these tracks at the end where they all sound similar ish that i, I kind of wish they would pick one of them to just say all right illusion and dream is our closer this is really solid that's gonna kind of end the album on a on a high note um mm -hmm. but yeah this track is this track is, is really solid. Why why is this one in your kind of rotation? Honestly, overall? it it's the the theme of the whole thing where it's just mm. like, yeah, people will say whatever they want to say and whatever they have to say to make you do what they want you to do. Mm -hmm. And in a late stage capitalist society, this speaks <laughs> to me even more. Right. Um but it it's it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, guess what? Old people are great. Right. And it's it's literally it's that delivery of illusion of dream dishonesty that pairing of those two lines are mm -hmm. chef's kiss to to my ears like it, it's one of those like i don't like the way it ends i will say um the, yeah with like that spoken word kind of thing like that someone should have taken that out <laughs> yes yeah uh, but i do like watch go I, I do like the song as a whole like it again it just speaks to me on a whole different level yeah. And also, this is, I've also got, like, what, 15, 17 years worth of, like, baggage associated oh, with for these sure. albums. Yep. Yeah. Um, and last track here, Sleep. Um, what was your rating? Is, oh, sorry. Order? That was probably, uh, I'm Morgan Webb, and it gives, I give it a three out of five. Um, oh. that's... I get that reference, but okay. That's right. It's, it's X-Play from the old, uh, tech TV. Um... Last track here, Sleep. Um, the piano comes out for the, uh, uh -huh. the the final track here. Um, this is fine. This is another, like, standard piano slow kind of crooning outro. It's also kind of a standard wind down as well. It's like, yeah, yes. we've rocked you and now we're literally going to try and put you to sleep. That's right. Time for everyone to leave the concert venue. We're all, we're all done. Um, I think it's fine. I think I think it's okay, but I think um, kind of following on illusion and dream here, it's like yeah, it was okay, but that last one was was pretty strong. Um, so uh -huh. and for me, it's probably like a two out of five because uh, it's just sort of yeah, you're you're good. You 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 kind of got kind of got the ending here. Um, yep, I can agree with that one. Um, I will yeah. say I do. I just found out as well. Apparently, the song "Seek You Out" has never been played live. Interesting. I wonder why that is. I wonder if it's one of those things where it's like, we as a band do not like it. <laughs> we will not be playing <laughs> this live. That will not be happening. Uh, which I kind of always, uh, I always kind of appreciate that about a band where, um, I don't know if this is the case for them, but I like when a band puts an album out and they're like, I don't like the song. I put it on the album. I don't really care for it. We're never playing it live. And it's like, okay, fair enough. Well, it's like um, 
Ten Thousand Days by Tool has never been played live because right. that song is a nightmare to play live. Right. <laughs> right. Um so that's uh that's Signs of Life. Um I think I think for me this feels overall like a three out of five uh album. I think I think the the two paths diverged in two thousand five for me where one path took you to Poets of the Fall, and the other path took you to Canada for Our Lady Peace, and I walked the Our Lady Peace track. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, they, they very, both of them remind me a lot of each other. The lead singer for Our Lady Peace has a, a much more distinctive voice. Uh, you, most people probably know where they stand on that, that, uh, that voice already. Um, but I feel like if I had heard this in 2005, like if I had heard Late Goodbye in 2005, I probably would have been way into this band. Because um, this was a quality album coming out in 2005. Um, yeah. And our first I, album too, which I, I yeah. think is super impressive. Yeah. Um, I, I think the thing that I came out of this one the most was kind of I'm excited to see where they go um, because you know if, if I had heard this in 2005 I'd be like these these kids have a lot of promise let's let's see let's hope they put out another album and I know they've put out like uh -huh. a, a 10 or so more albums um, but I'm I'm really curious to see um, kind of where they like we've been talking about they're they're figuring out a lot of stuff in this album and I, I'm excited to see in future ones where that figuring out kind of settles in after doing some tours, after re recording some more albums, doing a bunch of other work. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see where, where they go from here. Um, and I, I think this is just a solid, this is a solid like 2005 rock album. And I think, I think oh. there's something great about that. Yeah. Uh, I tell you where they go. They go meet up with the old gods of Asgard. So that's where they go. That's <laughs> ah, references. Hey, uh, future episode. Um, yeah, but I, I, I think it's kind of interesting because I think, like we talked about at the beginning, you can listen to a bunch of album, like a bunch of artists' first albums. Like Radiohead's Pablo Honey is probably my biggest uh, example of this. And you listen to it and you're like, nope. <laughs> I, I, second album from on? Sure. I like Pablo, honey. No, no one at me. Um, I, I like that album a lot. Um, and I'm like the only person. Um, but you can listen to it and you can listen to a lot of like first albums from a band and be like, yeah, that's, I don't, they hadn't figured it out yet. That's, that's not what I like. And you're like album two, album three onward. I like that stuff, but we're not, we're not going to go backwards. You can also say that same thing about Nine Inch Nails. I'm sure someone is also saying like, well, Party Hate Machine sounds like it's in the 80s. And it's like, yeah, it was. Um, and uh, I that to me uh, is kind of this album where it's like, you're figuring it out. It came out in 2005. I think you guys did a good job. I think it's, uh -huh. I think it's solid. I mean, we've already talked about Muse as well uh, during this show. And like, there's mm -hmm. a prime example of your second album is the album. Mm -hmm. It's like their first album, Showbiz, which is fine. I, I like it a lot, album, but it's not great. Yeah, the second album is Origins of Symmetry, which is one of the best albums ever produced, in my opinion. It's like, I was listening to it again the other day. I was listening to the... They did like a quote-unquote remix of it. They essentially like remastered it, and they brought a bunch of instruments that were in the background to the foreground a little bit, and it sounds uh -huh. way different in a way that I kind of dig. That album is just banger after banger. That's a hell of an album from front. Uh -huh. Like they didn't miss at all for like three or four albums, and that that's impressive. Yeah. Not to mention it's got the a new day cover on it. Yeah, um, um, I'm not going to remember what that song is called uh, because you mentioned it, um, and that's <laughs> apparently how my brain's going to work today. Hooray! Um, yeah, feeling yeah. good. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, the feeling good cover, which is a great cover. Um, but yeah, what are now that you're kind of listening to this album again uh, for for the show? What do, what are your thoughts on it? So this is one of those things where like I struggle with this because it is a song I have almost two decades worth of crap associated with it. <laughs> yep, man, we are old. 
Um, <laughs> right. Um, I, I don't think it's as good as my heart tells me it is. Like, logically speaking, mm. this is not as good of an album as my heart thinks it is. You like it um, more I, than it is good. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I also, that's also a lot of association with things that have happened, things that, that, that have yeah. affected it in different ways. It took me like five years to be able to listen to Lift, which is probably my favorite album, my favorite song on this album, because I had it associated with a very negative experience. Mm, so therefore, sure. I took a long break from that kind of stuff. But right. all in all, it, it's a solid, solid, so, solid album. Yep. I just don't think it's as good as my memory tells me it was. Mm -hmm. And I think the lows are a lot lower than I remember them being. Sure. Um, like it's it's an interesting like thing where it's like oh the highs are still really high but the lows are like oh <laughs> but i i kind of like that everybody has albums like that where it's like i like this album a whole lot i'm not sure i can explain why i don't recommend you listen to it you probably won't like it you know like there's there's uh -huh. those sort of albums where you're like i've been listening to this for 20 something years i like it a lot nobody else does and that's okay don't listen to it <laughs> Well, um, to give you an idea, from a potential 60 points on sale here um, mm -hmm. for out of five ratings, um, we had a difference of six, like six points okay. difference in individual songs. Sure. So that should tell you everything you need to know with regards to how I may have tempered on this. But at the same time, the, the songs I adore are still the songs I adore. I will never not give Lift five out of five. I'll never not give... Illusion and Dream, 5 out of 5. I mm -hmm. can't help it. Those are just ingrained in my psyche as these specific types of songs. Right. Um, but yeah, the, the lows are a lot more questionable than I remember. Mm -hmm. And like you, like I I had this as my favorite Poets of the Fall album. I might have to change that after we've done this season. Okay. Because we're, we're, we're on the hunt for a new Poets of the Fall favorite. Because they've got some bangers of albums like like they've got some really solid things in here like i think we said we're doing five episodes this season yeah i think and like i'm torn between one of these two later albums of which one makes the cut and which one doesn't because mm -hmm. i think one of them has got a, an incredible start and a really lame finish and the other one has a, an okay start and a really good finish uh, so it's that's like a tough one uh-huh and yeah. then after that, we're going to jump all the way through to 2022, which is like, can they do it again? Right. Do they still in, have it in them? Yeah. It, yeah. You know, is this going to be a modern Poets of the Fall or is this going to be 2005 to 2010 Poets of the Fall just releasing in 2022? Right. Have they been doing the the review or the, the interview saying, we really wanted to get back to our rock roots. We really just wanted a, to kick it in a high gear for one more album. Um, Are they going to release a song called Poets of the Fall Still Suck or something? <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're going to re yeah, record a song called Primus Sucks, and you're like, wait, that's that other band. Hold on. Um, yeah, I don't... That'd be, it'll be interesting. Um, what's, what's our next album uh, going to be in case people want to start early? Uh, our next album is the second album. It's Carnival of Rust. Carnival of Rust. Uh, all right, if you want to uh, start listening to that early... You can do so and uh, take the next couple of weeks to listen to it. Uh, we won't be doing that because uh, we're gonna we're gonna stick to the the, the theme, the usual episode. Uh, but we hope you'll uh, join us for our next episode. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.